Hello everyone, welcome to Percussionology. Today I'm just gonna take a little bit of time to walk you through the process of what I do to teach my mallet students on how to read music and just kind of our little process that we do day to day. So the first thing I'm using is Skip to My Lou. Um, this is out of the Mark Wessels book. So the first thing that we usually do with the students is I'm gonna actually count all the rhythms. I'm gonna do the rhythms for the first two lines here in the book. Uh, just to get an idea. So our counting system using a foot tap and saying the notes. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll have the students use the mallet to point and follow along with the notes so that they're tracking the notes uh, with their eyes. So starting right here at the beginning, down, up, down, up, one, two, take three, four, one, two, three, one, two, take three, take four, one, two, three, one, two, take three, take four, one, two, three, one, two, take three, four, one, three, rest. The one thing I found is if the fundamentals are really solid with the students, I won't usually have to count the rhythms uh, because they've they understand what it's supposed to be at this point. So usually the first thing I actually have them do is say the note names in the rhythm. If this is an issue, you can go back to the counting version to start. I'm assuming that we've looked at the key signature. They understand that we're in the key of B flat. They know that there's two flats and every time that we see a B, it's gonna be a B flat and the E is an E flat. For the purpose of doing this, I'm actually going to say B flat and E flat and here's my process for doing it. So I'm gonna say the note names and then I'm gonna track and make sure that I'm kind of squeezing my B flats and E flats in there. So down, up, down, up, D, 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 B flat, B flat, B flat, D, D, E, C, 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 A, 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 C, C, E flat, D, 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 B flat, B flat, B flat, D, D, E, C, D, E flat, D, C, B flat, B flat, rest. Another option that we can do is instead of saying the accidentals in the measures, we can say just the note names and assume that they understand that the flats are going to be there. I could do it this way, down, up, down, up, D, 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 B, 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 D, D, F, C, 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 A, 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 C, C, E, D, 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 B, 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 D, D, F, C, D, E, D, C, B, B, rest. Once we're pretty comfortable with that, I'll go through that a multitude of times in order to make sure they're super confident with it. So the next step of the process is what I'll do is I'll have them figure out the lowest note and the highest note. And in this particular part of the music, uh, the lowest note that we have is A, and the highest note that we have is an F. So I'll have them put their right finger on F and their left finger on A, and I'll have them stand in the center of their playing area. This is really important in pretty much everything we do in mallets. So it gives them a good center of gravity uh, and make sure they're not reaching across the instrument. So once they're here, the next thing is I wanna make sure that they actually center their music. I will take time out of their setting up to make sure that in the center of their playing area that the music is right in the middle. And this will create a lot more comfort in their reading ability and making sure their peripheral vision is a little bit more simplified. So once we're here, the next step I'll do is actually have them tell me all the notes that are in it. So like, okay, what's the lowest note? And everybody touches A. Okay, what's the next note up? B flat, okay, the next note up from there is C. The next note up from there is we have a D. Uh, do we have any E flats? Uh, we have an E flat, okay? So we have an E flat and then the top note is F. So we'll finger through those notes and we'll just be using our fingers to do that so that they know and they can see exactly what they're playing for this part of the etude. The next thing that we're gonna do is I'll actually have them finger and say the notes at the same time. This step in the process is really important and builds confidence instead of them immediately playing because it gives them a chance to figure it out and it doesn't. they don't feel like everybody knows that they're missing notes. But in, even with that being said, I encourage my students every single day to say, you are going to make mistakes. If you're not making mistakes, then you're not trying and, the, and not trying is the only way you can fail at this. So I encourage them all the time to make as many mistakes as possible. We're gonna start with both fingers on D and I encourage them to alternate as much as possible. I really try to stay away from doubling notes when they're on the same note. This gets them more comfortable with figuring out how to come up with alternate stickings. Doing this step of the process and down, up, down, up. D, 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 B flat, B flat, B flat, D, D, E, F, C, 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 A, 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 C, C, E flat, D, 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 B flat, B flat, B flat, D, D, E, F, 
C, D, E flat, D, C, B flat, B flat, rest. I'll do this a number of times in this particular part of the music. I always know that when we have the faster and moving notes that are happening on the second line and the third measure, the C, D, E flat, D, C, I'll do this a bunch. They kind of memorize it a little bit, which is what I really try to keep away from, and I move at a pace so they can't memorize it too much but I try to move fast enough to at least them figure out that faster and moving passage. Once we've gotten really good at this, another step that you can add is now actually air sticking while they play. So I can say the notes out loud and kind of get used to what it feels like to have the mallets in my hand. I'll go through my checklist. Uh, you can watch, look at another video, but I go through back fingers, so water pistols, thumbs, index fingers and make sure that it's good. I'll have the kids hold them up so I can see them. And then the next thing is I'll air stick through it. Say the same thing, down, up, down, up. D, 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 B flat, B flat, B flat, D, D, F, C, 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 A, 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 C, C, E flat, D, 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 B flat, B flat, B flat, D, D, F, C, D, E flat, D, C, B flat, B flat, rest. Once we do this a couple of times and I can see that they kind of have figured out by watching their mallets. Uh, the next thing I do is have them play it. When they're playing it, usually sometimes what I do is I say the note names while they're trying to play it so they might try to figure it out and I'm also playing it at the same time while they're doing it. The last step is uh, playing it and I will say it out loud as if they were playing it by themselves. I usually don't have them count it out loud but that is another step that you can add to make sure that they understand to figure out the notes and you can see if they're saying their notes while they're doing it. Otherwise, you'll come to the realization real quick that some of the kids don't think the note names while they start playing. You can get them to say the note names out loud like I'm about to to do and that's another step in the process you can do to make sure that they're connecting the note names with the rhythms and playing down up down up D, 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 B flat, B flat, B flat, D, D, F, C, 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 A, 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 C, C, E flat, D, 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 B flat, B flat, B flat, D, D, F, C, D, E flat, D, C, B flat, B flat, rest. By counting the rhythms out loud, it'll, it definitely helps with the longer sustained notes that don't happen on the marimba. It usually eliminates a lot of the timing issues with the longer notes. One thing that I encourage my students all the time is when we're doing this is try to get a big full sound, especially if you have the ability to play on marimbas and xylophones and vibraphones. If you have bell kits, even then I would try to encourage them to get the biggest sound that they can within reason of what that instrument is capable of doing. Getting students to understand the importance of when they go from a bell kit to a marimba that they're going to have to kind of change their approach a little bit as it relates to the speed with which the mallet needs to travel. When you're playing on bells, a lot of the volume just comes out of the, the timbre of the instrument itself. Overall, the process is first, count the rhythms. Next, go through and saying all the note names. After that, we're gonna finger through the notes and say the note names. Next, we can air stick through and say the note names and we can play and say the note names. And last thing we can do is actually just play without saying the note names and really try to integrate that inner dialogue that they're trying to perform uh, while they're playing. I hope this has been helpful, everyone. Uh, if you have any questions about the process of learning notes on mallets and anything you'd like to discuss, please feel free to email me at percussionology at gmail.com. Check it out on Instagram and Twitter. And you can also follow us on Facebook. Really look forward to your feedback and maybe having some open discussions about how your process works and maybe uh, how to incorporate that in your overall learning process. Once again, thank you for visiting and hopefully you enjoyed it.